Welcome. This will be a video lecture series on conduction of heat. Conduction is a part of broader topic called heat transfer. And as this is the first lecture, I will briefly introduce about the various mechanism of heat transfer. And then I will start discussing the conduction and its various aspects. One of which is thermal conductivity. Okay. So let's start. Heat transfer is a branch of thermal physics. Okay. Is related to branch of thermal physics and it deals with the generation, use, transfer of a thermal thermal energy between various physical systems and so on. So basically, a heat transfer from one body to another body by three different mechanisms, and they are conduction, convection, and radiation. So let's see what these are. So first conduction. So in conduction, heat transmitted along substance from its hotter part to colder part or from hotter body to colder body if they are in contact. And the important thing here is there is no bodily transference of material. Okay. So this term you can appreciate when I will give you an example. So heating of a metallic rod. So when one end of rod is heated, then other end is automatically gets heated. That's we all know. So simply uh, you can understand from this cartoon, like you just hold one end in your hand and put other end of rod on top of a fire you will feel heat here in your hand. Why? Because heat is conducted from the hotter part to the colder part. And this is the example of conduction. So other method is convection. So what happened in convection is heat transmitted from hotter part to colder part. But in this case, there is bodily transference of material. And this is the basic difference between the conduction and convection. In both cases, heat transmitted from the hotter to colder part. But the difference is there in convection, there is bodily transfer of material. And in conduction, there is no bodily transference of material. The example of convection is heating of water. When you heat up your uh, water, then initially, the lower layer gets heated but after some time the upper layer also gets heated here the upper layer gets heated because of this phenomena convection what happened when you heat up a water then the hotter part which initially existed in the lower lower side it will move up colder part will move down so you can see here there is transference of material happening inside the water and that's why this process is called convection and third is radiation so in radiation heat is transmitted from one body to another body and they are separated from each other and here is the difference in convection and in conduction we need physical contact okay but in radiation, if two bodies are separated, still heat can be transmitted. And that's because of radiation. Okay. And this radiation process is very important. That's how we get heat from sun to earth. Because there is no physical contact between these two. But still we can get heat from sun. Okay. And... Another uh, example of radiation, if you stand in front of fire, then you will feel heat. Okay. So if fire is near to you, then you will feel heat just because of this radiation. So this is how these three mechanisms work. So basically in this lecture series, we will focus to conduction and various aspects of it. So let's start first the thermal conductivity. Thermal conductivity is a property of matter. Okay. 
it's basically the property of material which involve in the phenomena of conduction so let's understand first so to understand it let's assume we have a thin slab of some kind of material and the area of this face is a okay so there are many faces so let's say the the area of this face is a this face will be also a and faces are separated by a distance of x and let's assume the temperature of these two phase is theta 1 and theta 2 where theta 1 is greater than theta 2 in such scenario what you will see that there is flow of heat from one phase basically from this phase to this phase and the flow of heat is perpendicular to the phase okay so it will move from this side to this side now this is the all scenario so let's try to calculate the amount of heat which transform from this hotter part to this colder part and what we will see basically this is experimental findings that heat flowing from hotter to colder part is proportional to the area of this phase larger the area more will be the heat flow now q will depend upon temperature difference larger the temperature difference more will be the heat flow third factor which affect this q is this distance so q is inversely proportional to the distance of separation and fourth is time so if you allow more time then more heat will flow so it will proportional to time t so the flow of heat depend upon this four factor and if you combine all of this we can simply write q is proportional to a times theta 1 minus theta 2 into t divided by x now we can remove this proportional just by placing one proportionality constant k and this proportionality constant is called thermal conductivity and this is characteristic of material so any material which have larger k then it will conduct more heat okay like uh, copper iron all and they will conduct more heat compared to the wood so the thermal conductivity of wood is or glass is much smaller compared to the copper or iron and so on so just note few things here first we have assumed that there is no loss of heat from other faces of slab otherwise uh, this will not hold okay second uh, one thing you can also note that conductivity this k k is basically constant but in a certain temperature range so to a small extent this thermal conductivity depend upon the temperature range of measurement suppose you are measuring this k in lower temperature range then it will have a significantly different value compared to the high temperature range now let's write this in differential notation so let's say if delta q amount of heat flow in time t across the thickness of dx and the temperature between them is d theta then our equation become like this so here this d theta by dx is called temperature gradient and you notice here there is a negative sign why we didn't have earlier this negative sign is due to this factor you can easily see that d theta by dx is temperature gradient and as you moving toward the positive x theta is decreasing 
okay because we are we are going from higher temperature to lower temperature okay so d theta decreases as x increases so it will have a negative value that sig signify this negative sign so if you take this definition and try to define the k okay mathematically we know what k is but if you want to write the definition of k then we can easily write just substitute area equals to 1 time equals to 1 temperature gradient equals to 1 then k is equals to dq so basically conductivity equals to heat transfer so that's why we can define the thermal conductivity as an amount of heat transfer in unit time through unit area under unit temperature gradient okay now remember all this formula we need this uh, while solving the while solving the numerical problems so sometime we need to find out the dimension we need to know this so this is how mathematically we can write the k so in order to find the dimension just substitute the unit for all so q is calorie x centimeter a centimeter square this is degree centigrade time in second so we can write the unit of k as calorie per second per centigrade per centimeter cgs unit okay so if you want to write in si unit then calorie become joule second is second degree centigrade become kelvin and centimeter become meter so in si we can write joule per second per kelvin per meter and sometime you will see what per kelvin per meter why because joule per second is what so you can see Mm, this is the unit so so far i have covered the briefly mm, mechanism of transfer of heat and the thermal conductivity in next lecture i will cover some more topics so see you in next part thank you